Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm sat in this very comfortable first class compartment in a Mark 1 carriage at a Buckinghamshire Railway Centre. I've come here today to do another episode of Miniature Railway Britain. More on steam train, by the way. Um, we're on the stand. Oh, and there's phone on the train. Looks like we're going to have a bit of a race. Come here today to do an episode of Miniature Railway Britain because we're about to go past the Golding Spring Miniature Railway. But I thought I'd start with a ride on the train. But before we get going to all the exciting bits, I just want to say thank you very much. We have reached 5,000 subscribers. So for everyone who subscribed, thank you very much. That really means a lot, and I'm very happy you've subscribed. I think we're about to overtake furnace number 20. There she is. And then on this side is the Golden Spring Minutes Railway, which is where we're going to. So you can just see now we're just going past the station. Q1 waiting for the passenger train. So it's episode of Minutes Railway Britain. We're going to the Golden Spring Minutes Railway. Baby Delta there. And um, I thought we'd start with a train ride. So when you get fresh there, when you come to Quainton, you get a ride up and down. There's two lines each side of what was the network rail freight only line which is just there but since hs2's come about that has now closed but we're going to have a look at that oh there's waleswood over there on shed i'm hoping to get a ride behind her she's a winning loco so it's going to be quite an exciting day we'll have a look around the railway center and we'll make our way over to the golding springs miniature railway which is run by the elsbury society of modern edges the photos number 20 is overtaking us again So we're at a steam gala, the spring steam gala. By the time you watch this video, oh, an old underground train there, I will have published a video with all the footage of the steam gala. So there'll be plenty of races with furnace number 20. So if you want to see some races without me talking, look at Lincoln screen now. That vehicle there, that grey thing, it's not a diesel, it's actually a steam rail car. It was built for Egyptian railways of all places. But it's quite good here because you can see some unusual trains and locomotives that you wouldn't expect to see in Britain from other countries. So we'll, we'll have a good look around all of that. We're just coming into Quainton Road. So what I'm gonna do, we'll get off the train. I'll show you the loco we've just traveled behind and we'll go and have a look around the site. So here we are, we've arrived at Quainton Road. So that's the locomotive we've just traveled behind. An Andrew Barclay 060 built in Kilmarnock in Scotland. You see quite a few Andrew Barclay locos at Heritage Railways. Usually they're 040s, but there's a few 060s. So she was a winning loco, not travelled behind her before, so I'm pleased to have her for haulage. I will later on hopefully get Waleswood, the other loco for haulage, um, that's that's a winner for me. What we're going to do, we'll have a little look around the site. Oh, there's um, there's miniature traction engines. There's a miniature traction engine just coming this way. So um, let's just watch that go by, and then we'll continue to explore the site. That's pretty cool, I like that. There's also a little steam lorry over there. Um, but as I said, there will be a lot of footage of all these kind of workings in the Steam Gala video. So, there's our loco again. What we'll do, we'll go over here. I just want to show you a few things. And now I'm going to kind of make my way around the site over to the Miniature Railway. This big beast here, Janice. She's a South African loco. She was actually built in the UK, in Glasgow. But she was built for South African Railways. And she's actually narrow gauge. She's three foot six inches. So hard to tell from here but because a lot of people someone say well how can it be narrow gauge it's huge and it is huge but narrow gauge doesn't necessarily always mean small so this is Janice I suppose she'll have a steam again but it's nice to see her here last time we went to Minutes Railway we featured a full size South African loco was down at the Misons Railway in Surrey so they've got a South African tank engine you. you see that diamond that means this diamond here means you built in Glasgow you often see locos around the world with a diamond on that usually means they were built by North British in Glasgow now from the train I pointed out we could see an Egyptian steam rail car. Well, there's a few unusual things here. That's the Egyptian steam rail car. That's um, DMU like used to work on this line. It's either a 115 or a 117. I do remember them when I was little on the Chilton main line. And there's an underground train. So quite an interesting combination of trains there. Now talking of underground, we're gonna continue with undergrounds. There's something else I want to show you over here. Oh, and the big building in front of us 
That used to be Oxford Ruley Road Station. It was at Oxford Ruley Road, and they dismantled it and bought it here. When it, it's closed to the station, it was used as a garage for a while. Then when anyone wanted to redevelop the site, it was bought here. If you want to see the site of it, what it's like now, if you have a look at this link on screen now, video called The Other Side of Oxford, we did go and have a look at the site. So, variety of trains over there now. Talking of underground, here is a New York subway carriage. So that's another very unusual thing to see. I'm not sure if it's the only one in the UK, but there certainly isn't many. It's quite, um, yeah, just adds to the variety. It's funny, if I go over here, what we should be able to do is see a New York, Lon New York Underground and London Underground together. Yeah, New York Underground, London Underground, with a South African steam loco in the middle. There's probably nowhere else in the world you can do that. Come up here to the old Quainton Road station, the original railway station on the Great Central and Metropolitan Main Line, which, as I said, Trains did pass through here until fairly recently, but it has since closed for the building of HS2, which is nothing to get onto. Little steam lorry there, look at that. See, she's got a Q number plate, a Q reg, so that means she's a fairly modern loco um, or road registered vehicle. If a car isn't identifiable by its year, sometimes they get q -ridged. There goes furnace number 20. We're going to have to go and have a ride on her later. She's not a winner, but I'm going to have to have a ride. Anyway. I've ridden behind her at the Lakeside and Haverthwaite Railway, where she used to be based, then again at Tyser Locomotive Works, and then hopefully today here. What's nice is, I'm not sure when, maybe 20 odd years ago, they put this footbridge in, because previously the only bridge between each side of the site was the one down at the old Point and Road station. But this bridge not only provides another route around the site, but it means you get very good views of the train. And also, it's um, you see over there, there is a lift on that side, and there's a ramp on this side. So it means, you know, access for all is available here. There's a lift over there. So we're gonna make our way up here. See that underground, that's another underground train. That one just there. So um, in a few years time, we, we're going to be able to watch high-speed trains speeding past at 200 miles an hour. That's going to be quite fun. So this site is constantly evolving and changing, and it will be somewhere where, you know, when you think we've just seen the oldest steam loco in steam in the world go past, and just the other side of us is, like, the newest high-speed line in the world. It's just, like, two complete opposite ends of railway technology here together. So when we get to here, we're going over the bridge, Get a nice view of where we've just been. That's the train we've just come on, that one there. And furnace number 20 is up there, so we'll probably wait and watch her go under the bridge. You can see the buffer up there. So they don't go far, it's only about half a mile. And then the line continues that way to Ellsbury, the one in the middle. They did occasionally used to run special charter trains up here. I came up here on a Chilton Turbo once. In fact, I once came up here, I don't have a video of it, unfortunately. I came up here on the Hastings 101 unit, and she did a trip up to Calvert, so that was a really good charter. But I've um, also come up here. Have a look at the link on screen now, you can see a Chilton Railways Class 165 passing through the site, running along next to a steam loco, which um, seemed a bit unusual. Oh, look, freight going underneath us now. Steam hall freight. like furnace number 20 is coming this way so two steam trains and then the miniature railway is just over there so we'll go and have a ride on that so the station is is up there which we saw from the train so you get parallel run with the main line and then it kind of goes all the way around over behind those carriages, behind those bushes. So it's, it's a quite an exciting railway, the Golding Spring Miniature Railway.
Millen's coming back with the freight train as well. So, this bridge is uh, quite a good place to come and watch trains. Now, let's go and look for some miniature trains and we get to walk through this part of the yard. So, we'll see more standing gauge stuff as well. So, like I say, it's a very exciting place to come and visit. I Usually whenever I come here, I'm here all day. Uh, it's not a place I can come to, you know, just for a little bit of time. It's a sort of place I spend all day at. So, like I say, although, um, you know, there's not a huge amount of, is in distance to ride, it's, there's a lot to see and do. There's another underground carriage, underground train there. I think we can walk through the restoration shed and um, might see some more locos. Oh, yeah, here we go. It's some great western lever lights is a penny, I think under restoration and here is a huge I'd love to have a trip behind is a huge heavy freight tank engine and um, then I can get out of the event perhaps we can't oh well have a look in here anyway because we come in here so yeah it's a pannier tank London transport livery oh and here is with it cool I have had a ride behind her both here and at the battlefield line in the past there she is if you want to see her in action at the battlefield line have a look at link on screen now there's the heavy freight tank that is going to be something to see. So if they could get it to haul, maybe not here, but somewhere, like the Great Central Railway, where there's like a, a really, really long train, that is going to be quite amazing to see. Of course, the Great Central Railway is basically the same railway as here, it's just further up the line. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, what part of the old Great Central. Right, so we didn't go through there, but it didn't matter. Oh, look at this. So there probably would have been, you know, the Pickup, so yeah, it's a T stock, it's a Metropolitan Railway T stock. So the electric Metropolitan Railway trains have never come this far. The electric's only ever gone as far as Amersham, but um, it's nice, you know. There's quite a lot of London Underground stock here because it is, it seems funny that we're out in rural Buckinghamshire, but it was part of the Metropolitan um, line once, it was actually on the London Underground. Quainton Road is a disused tube station or disused London Underground station, um, which seems strange, but it is. Ah, oh, now this locomotive, another one, I have had a ride behind her. She's something quite special. She looks like, you know, the Huns at Fell tank that you see at quite a lot of heritage railways, but she was the last steam locomotive to be built in Britain. Most people say no, Evening Star was, but Evening Star was the last mainline steam locomotive to be built in Britain. This one was built four years later in 1964, and she was actually the last standard gauge locomotive to be built in Britain. The very last commercial locomotive to be built in Britain was a steam loco, two foot gauge loco called Tranquil, and she's now at Statfold Barn. I saw her there the other day. Um, so, yeah, a few different lasts. They did get them all together once at the National Rail Museum. They had an event called 1968 and all that, which I went to. So, this is Waleswood. This is the loco. Basically, I've come here to see. I want to ride behind her. I did see her at the, um, ch um, not Chernip, I think, Chasewater Railway Scala last October, but I didn't actually get a trip behind her. She was also built by Hudswell Clark in Leeds. Built in 1906, so she's over 100 years old, but she's still going strong. So we're going to walk up here now. We're very close to the miniature railway. It is literally the other side of this hedge and um, there's a little crossing up here. So we'll go and have a look around the site. As well as the miniature railway, they have um, some model railways as well, which we, we did see from the trains we went past. Is that a train coming? I can hear some rumbling sort of sound. Here's the level crossing. It says miniature railway open, so I'm quite excited to see which local steam local we're ride behind. Oh yeah, it's a good train, Millum. The Huns Hudswell Clark is shunting the goods train. That's a bit of complex track work here, look at that. God knows how many rails. And then um, see the junction that way, North Junction. When I first came as a child, it only used to go around this circuit, so it's gradually extended. So here we are, coming up to the top of the site. There's the steaming base. There's that traction engine again. Should have got a lift. So that's the traction engine. Um, we're going to walk through here, so it's, it's a fairly big site, oh, that's quite cool, it's like a, a small house, it's like a model house, but half size. There you go, the traction engine.
And obviously you watching this can't smell it. There's a great smell of steam coming from the steam loafer. Because traction engines are quite slow, you can actually just walk along next to it. What we what we're gonna do now, coming up here over the tunnel of the Peninsula Railway. I wonder if we'll be able to see a train come through the tunnel. So we come up to here and there's this little picnic area up here above the tunnel. Um, so you should see the railway line. There it is. That's the railway line down there. It goes directly under us. Um, not sure when a train's gonna come. If not, if I don't see one now, I'll come up here later and film. Um, the village of Quainton is about three quarters of a mile that way. You might just be able to see the windmill. Talking of unusual things, cable cars. It's like a, a bit of a model village kind of thing. Crazy. You've got a funicular railway and a cable car. Let's go down and have a look. And that tracks in is just about to pass us. If you come down to here, I think if you tread on this, it gets in motion. So if I've, yeah, I've just set off the cable cars and it sounds like there's a train coming. So I actually set off the funicular and there's the cable cars in the trees. There's also a little model tram. Let's just walk past and we'll see the little tram. So technically this is like a model village in my looks now. See the little model tram just coming along. So you can you put your foot on those pedals and you set them off, which is quite fun. Not been on it, but it looks a bit like a great Orm tramway car right now. Let's go and have a look. The steam engine just passed us, is now pulling into the station. Up here is a big outdoor miniature model railway. This is the miniature railway. Some shed there, there's a high neck diesel. I remember that when I was a child. That's been here for years, that look. What's going on here? This model railway. So, there's a, there's a steam loco over there. You can just see over there Tom's tank engine. So, um, what we'll do, if we hang out in this corner here, we should see something come past on one side, literally on one side or another. Either, so there's 16 mil in the middle, there's gauge one. Then here you've got three and a half, five inch and seven and a quarter. And then over there you've got standard gauge. And I've come along at a time where not much is going on. It's clever if we can step up in terms of size here. So we'll see something on the 16 mil, and we could potentially see something on the gauge one. Then on the miniature, then on the standard gauge. But it's all gone a bit quiet, anyway, it's what's just on. There's a couple of um, starting to spring into action now, a couple of steam locos. You see Thomas there, he, he's not live steam, he's electric. Hello, Seems to have picked up, as well as Annie and Clarabelle, an American looking clear story coach. Um, hope Annie and Clarabelle aren't jealous that he's got a third uh, carriage to go with him. Anyway, there's the steam loco, right over the other side. I, don't know, I do want to see that. And probably by the time I can hear some whistling on the miniature, so we'll probably see the train on the miniature get past as well. Here it comes. It looks like um, Corey Hunslet of some sort. Let's have a look. See if she comes around. And there is a train on the miniature. So if I stand here, yeah, it's a Corey Hunslet. Um, we rode behind one at the South Downs like there, not so long ago. See now, there is a train. Let's just see this train on the miniature railway, and then I'm going to go and have to have my ride. Looking too excited. It's Q1. There's only one of these preserved. She's in the National Air Museum. She was in steam at the Bluebell a few years ago. That's what she'll buy. Let's go and have a look over here, over there. There's also a um, little cafe up this end of the site. You've got one cafe down in the old Ruley Road station and um, there's another little refreshment kiosk just 
just there. So I might go and get a cup of tea and then go for a ride. But that's Golding Spring Central. Look, there's that traction engine again. I'm now going to go and have a ride on the Munich Railway.
Funny, I just said I'd never had a ride behind the Q1, and now here we are. I have just had a ride behind the Q1. That was the loco that we travelled behind. Um, I'm probably going to go and enjoy the rest of the gala now, watch a few more trains, maybe have another ride. I've had a great time here, um, and as I said, there's going to be a video. By the time you watch this video, there already will be a video from the gala today. So. I hope you enjoyed it. Do come and visit the Buckinghamshire Rail Centre and the Golding Spring Miniature Railway. They're two very interesting and quite different railways, but they're side by side, so it makes visiting the two together quite an exciting day out. I'm just going to head over to the model railway again. I thought it would be a nice place to finish. There's a single fairly there speeding along. And then, of course, there's the Q1, which we just rode behind. And there's a cute little narrow gauge steam that go. We'll just watch that go by. Oh, there's another steam on the main, as in the miniature. Watch that go by, and now I probably will end this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching and um, please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment and from the Golding Spring Miniature Railway at the Buckinghamshire Railway Centre, goodbye. I'd like to bring you here more.